हेलो हेलो एज लक वुड हैव इट वी गॉट ड्रॉप्ड ऑफ द लास्ट टाइम अराउंड बट हे एक्साइटेड टू बी बैक हैव इन सीन यूल इन अ वाइल बट गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग पेशेंट एडवोकेसी विथ डॉक्टर साक्षी टूडे डॉक्टर साक्षी इज अ फिजिशियन एंड शी इज द फाउंडर ऑफ यूनाइटेड फॉर ट्रांसजेंडर हेल्थ I'm going to quickly introduce her. She's a practicing physician and a passionate advocate for queer and trans health. She firmly believes in healthcare equity as a human rights issue. She is the founder of United for Transgender Health as I said, which is an organization based out of Dehradun that aims to make healthcare non-discriminatory and accessible for the transgender community while also focusing on the mental well-being and the rights of the LGBTQIA+ community. Going to quickly add her we'll get started on this uh, interesting conversation on patient advocacy and what it entails hi welcome back hello again <laughs> yeah i think we were doing such a great job like also i think instagram is low key like queer phobic so it just it just couldn't handle our our awesomeness and it oh my it, god it, no i i mean it obviously is like obviously all these institutions <laughs> Hey, um, okay. no, we're not going uh, and we're not yeah. going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. I'm so sorry. We're not. Yeah, but but welcome back, Doctor uh, Sakshi. Uh, excited to talk to you again. I know we won't be able to redo exactly what we did before, and there was some magic happening there. But we'll we'll attempt. We'll we'll do our best. All right. Um. So I'm going to again very naively ask my first question, which is, uh, in a country like ours, where you know uh, doctors. tend to be put on a pedestal and their word is sort of the word of law um and and the, it, it's you know, collaborative care is still in a very nascent stage in our country wherein you know you speak with the doctor the doctor presents you with various options of care and then you sort of get to choose an option that works for you etc so in in such a context is patient advocacy even a thing and have you seen it uh, in practice anywhere uh i would say uh upon upon that a lot of doctors also advocate for patient advocacy so uh again like i said <laughs> the last time around <laughs> uh there are social workers who are working especially for streamlining care when it comes to patients in government settings or uh, again in private settings as well but uh in when it comes to india i would say we're still far behind but we have and we have a long way to go but we're getting there mm -hmm. so uh, i mean again uh, i'm on this uh, whatsapp group which basically is just a group of people who work for patient advocacy all around the country so we mm -hmm. get people like uh, i mean we get people who are not, who are disabled or people again from a marginalized community or uh, somebody is not able to afford treatment or has just a lot of uh, bills to clear and there are people working tirelessly for for health it it's just crazy i mm. mean i because before uh, joining this group and before i was uh, introduced to all of this i didn't know that this would be possible i mean the the kind of things that they've made possible it's unbelievable and and mm -hmm. the book so it's happening and we will we'll get there yeah no thank you sakshi like that that makes me hopeful and you also pointed out how like we we share a complicated relationship with with doctors right on the one hand there is this reverence and on the other hand you also hear of cases like like you very rightly pointed out where doctors have been beaten they've been threatened uh, molested and you know that is that is also a reality that that a lot of doctors uh, live with so like you very rightly pointed out there are there are two sides to the coin and um, you also suggest that there are doctors and healthcare professionals who are working tirelessly to make it a more inclusive space an accessible space um but you know having said that actually like as as a queer disabled person myself i have definitely faced discrimination within the healthcare system. i'm someone who accesses both mental and physical health care um and, and in those spaces i felt often my identity was respected or it was it was invisibilized and i maybe it's not even coming from a place of mal intent on part of the it, it, it's almost like dismissal like my priority is treating your health and not necessarily like uh, everything else you know the bedside manner so to say um so what have you to say about that sakshi like how can one demand for more you know queer and trans affirmative health care 
Yeah, I'm just going to uh, cite an example. I am queer. I am neurodivergent. And the reason I work on uh, work so much for both these, uh, when it comes to health for the queer people, and when it comes to health for uh, the autistic neurodivergent people, is because I myself identify with them. So, and again, I mean, I would want to pursue uh, queer health or just in the future, maybe become a, a gender affirming surgeon because I relate and I want to give back to my community, but a lot of doctors do not mm. because a lot of doctors are not even like, let's just say that doctors come from all sorts of places and all sorts of classes and all sorts of backgrounds. And it's not just doctors, all sorts of healthcare professionals, in fact. So they come from uh, backgrounds and societies where they're not even exposed to uh, queerness in general. Or mm. let's say a disability where you're supposed to be sensitive to a disabled person mm. and to also disabilities that aren't very really visible. Mm. So when it comes to all of that, uh, that is, again, one of the reasons that UTH was founded, because we want to sensitize doctors and healthcare professionals to disabilities, to queerness, to absolutely anything on the, on the spectrum. We want them to be sensitive and just treat uh, a patient as a patient. I mean, regardless of uh, however their sexual orientation is or however they choose to identify themselves. So that uh will take a little time but again like i said it's happening right um no so actually i i love that you know you saw that there was this huge gap and and through united for transgender health you're sort of trying to bridge that gap and as someone who's uh, li like you were also saying previously as someone who's on both sides of the coin as a healthcare professional and as someone who is a recipient as a queer uh, and neurodivergent person you sort of get uh, what's happening on both sides and, and you're trying to become that bridge. So how is it, if, if I may ask, how is it that, you know, Uth hopes to uh, fill this gap? What are some modalities that you, that you're hoping to use? Uh, we're just going to be sensitizing. I mean, for, for now, all that we're doing is that we're creating modules and uh, workshops for doctors, for mm -hmm. college going students for, in med school and for uh, anyone working in a hospital setting, basically. So just mm -hmm. sensitize them in a way mm. uh, to, I mean, it's, it's a basic necessity <laughs> in today's age. So, I mean, that's, that's something we're working on uh, right now. No, absolutely. And I mean, conversations are definitely the way to go. Um, I do that's know true. that you know, when I'm facilitating a workshop, if you feel safe enough, I often come out uh, to a group and say, if you visit it, yeah. person, I'm at one now and, um, you you don't i mean also it, it's safe for me i make sure uh you know I'm, I'm in a place where i can reach out to someone should something untoward happen and all all of that my safety being priority i feel like it also really shifts perspective when you know someone meets a person and they see Absolutely. that um it's, it's actually a person on the other side who is so much more than queer and trans identity but is also their queer trans identity um, so I think, yeah, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm super excited for, you know, the wonderful work that I know that Uth is going to do. Um, I, I was also wondering, Sakshi, you know, let's say a doctor or a healthcare provider does not respect your gender identity or your sexual orientation. What are some recourses available? Is there, is there a space that we can go and complain? Um, how does one approach that? Uh, I might get a lot of backlash from my fraternity for this, but sue them. I mean, sue the hell out of them. <laughs> but uh, again, you, th there is always somebody accountable who you can uh, talk to about this. There is always, and, and especially when most of the time doctors are coming. I mean, not I don't speak only for doctors, but I speak for most people in general, I believe. They're coming from a very ill-informed uh innocent space in in its own sense so mm. i would suggest like it's my go-to uh mo modus operandi that i like to talk to people and make them uncomfortable if somebody's mm. making you uncomfortable about how you are or, or your sexual identity your orientation whatever it is just talk to them about it 
mm-hmm. and if that doesn't help i mean i understand that that might be a difficult situation to be in and a lot of people might not have the bandwidth to do that in mm. a hospital setting but somebody is accountable a doctor is accountable for how they treat you and i mean they're supposed to treat you empathetically so oh. yeah so them yeah no this is true and i think it really helps to hear this from you know a doctor because again like yes at the end of the day a doctor is a service provider and you are paying in some manner of form for your service even if it's for free it's taxpayers money at the end of the day right so like you are well within your rights to say that something is not right or you were not treated with respect and and you know like sachi you know what you said is asserting your identity and making them uncomfortable because often uh, you know a lot of gynecs ask this question as to whether your ma- like they've asked me and i'm married um, and then i will hit them back with no but i'm sexually active like so can we have that conversation um, where it's not about my marriage um, or or like the solution is somehow not that so i think uh, yeah making having a conversation can, can be your go to but like should it not be respected then absolutely there are other ways available um you can de- definitely the doctor is accountable like like sakshi rightly said um sakshi there's also a lot of fear within you know the community to often this healthcare right like within the queer and trans community i notice how people will sit on their illness they will wait for it to occur and like it gets so bad that they almost have to be admitted to a hospital is when they will go and seek care right. um what do you want to say to folks who are not being proactive about their health in that sense and it's not necessarily their fault right because the system has failed them um or, or it feels unsafe to them uh, so w- w- what can they do sakshi uh firstly they can reach out to us uh we're here to help them in any way that we can and we have an inventory of doctors around the country who are queer affirmative who identify as allies so whatever your issue is whatever your medical issue is we there's certainly a way that we can go around and we can help you out with it i myself am a doctor so i can definitely at least guide you through it uh other than that unfortunately again i would like to apologize on behalf of my fraternity uh for any disregard that uh my other community the queer community has been uh, met with so uh again it's it's it, it goes just way back i mean and there's a lot to do and we're at it so we're going to be sensitizing all of us we're going to be sensitizing healthcare providers but your health is what matters most and there there's research there's proven research and uh, case studies which say that uh, you know most trans patients don't approach the, the the hospital setting like i believe 33% of them waited until it went it got critical to mm. approach a hospital setting so that's not what you're supposed to do i understand that it's difficult for us but we're here Mm. and again we're queer and we're not going anywhere so just reach out to us yeah yeah and uh, you know just sachin as you were speaking i was also thinking about how um, it's not just the doctors right there's also like a whole horde of administrative staff uh, that are supporting those operations and you know often like these these bureaucratic systems are are sort of meant to uh, not make it an easy process when you're not normative uh especially like you know let's say you want you wanted a, a particular name to be then it's not the same name that's on your identity card there'll be a bit of you know uh tuffle there and people will refuse to like dead naming is i think the most common sort of um you know violence that a trans person is met with and sort of you you left running from pillar to post trying to access care um for something that is that is so close to your identity and so important especially in the, in, in the case of like gender affirming surgeries and and treatments and therapies right um it's so challenging to navigate uh, the healthcare system as someone from a marginalized identity and i i i speak again from experience as you know a savarna woman so i i cannot imagine you know what it is like for someone from a different caste situation um so it it's very reassuring to hear that there is an organization that i can reach out to 
um, and, and speak to and access care. And they also guide me to healthcare professionals who are sensitive and sensitized and identify as folks from the community or as allies. Uh, I think you're doing really God's work uh, in many ways. And uh, thank you so, so much for uh, being a part of this conversation and for the work that you do. Thank you for having me. More, more power and more love to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was, this was wonderful. And I hope that this is the first of many conversations and collaborations that we embark on together. Um, I think she uh, says that they want to add something. Shall I just bring them on? Sure, sure. Let me, let me just bring them on. Great. So Shiv's also a part of United uh, for Transgender. Right, she's the co-founder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi. hi, I just wanted to quickly say hi to you guys. Uh, and uh, uh, recently, as a part of what we conducted a uh, mobile photography workshop with, uh, with a shelter home called, uh, trans shelter home called Garima Gray. And... Uh, one very interesting thing sort of came uh, up where uh, I was talking to this trans woman, Sashi, uh, and she was saying that uh, we were talking about the, the, the similar kind of stuff that you guys were talking about, how healthcare is so difficult for them to access and stuff like that. So they were saying before seeing the doctor, what's difficult for them is to, to make the, to enter the hospital, to enter the uh, 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 medical care. It's very, uh, it, they get judged or they get, uh, they are not allowed to sometimes enter because they, they explicitly told me that uh, guards ko sensitize karo, aapko, uh, sensitize karna hai so it's not just the medical uh, uh, fraternity that we're talking about. We're also talking about, uh, that's why I wanted to add, we are also talking about the administrative staff, the, uh, the guards who are working there, um, everybody who's working there because it's not just... So they, they told me that in order to get to the doctor, they have to go through uh, many stages of different people, uh, the reception, the guards, uh, nurses, and people like that. And at every point, and when, we, and when these people are going to uh, hospitals or uh, trying to access medical care, they're already very vulnerable. It's not their first thought. We feel like Achha, hume chot lagi hai. We, we need to go see a doctor. But they would only wait till the, the situation is very dire to go to uh, a medical facility to uh, opt for that, to, to, take, to seek help. So uh, if there are so many checkpoints that they have to go through, that it's, it's, it really breaks and crushes their soul by the time that they reach the doctor. So even if the doctor is very uh, accommodating and very you know uh, understanding and things like that, it's the rest of the staff. It's the rest of the people also that are uh, really uh, posing a threat to their 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 uh, well-being. No, absolutely, and that's such an important <clears throat> point, Shiv, because we, we were just discussing how it's not just the doctor, right? Like there are so many systems, and there are just so many like formalities. It, it's a day of formal institution. So it's not as simple as going into a shop and like purchasing for something. Like there's so many, like there's so much paperwork that's involved. There's so many people that are involved. And even if like, hey, you sensitize the entire hospital, the fact that there'll be other patients who may not look at you with kind eyes or who may you no know, point and laugh. And I, I, I know of like friends with whom this has happened where like other folks in, in the hospital have, have like pointed and laughed or have made comments. So there's really such a need for you know, an organization like yours where you're uh, trying to work with the entire system and change conversations um, around this and, and, and really like to sensitize people and love like how Sakshi said, hey, maybe let, let's, let's just assume that they're coming from an innocent place and let's work with them like that. Let's give them the benefit of doubt. Um, before we write them off. So, so I, I really love that, you know, we're calling people in to these conversations instead of like just calling them out, which really serves nobody. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution, Shiv. I'm super glad with this uh, surprise entry. But thank you so much for this conversation. And yeah, like I was telling Sakshi as well, I, I look forward to many more conversations and many more collaborations with, uh, with Uth. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night.